What if Miroslav Klose managed Werder Bremen? Club legend and the all-time top goal scorer of the German national team, we've swapped Klose from his current club in Austria to one of the Bundesliga's newly promoted sides. After replicating results until January, Bremen sit in 8th place and within reaching distance of European competitions. The squad itself has seen some nice development with a combination of experienced players and promising future talents. Niklas Fulkrug has been in the spotlight for his fantastic form, already 10 goals in the Bundesliga, which earned him his first call-up to represent Germany at the 2022 World Cup. I don't think we need to talk anymore about Dean Monschau's performance, but one thing is for certain, I want to develop the next wave of talents who can represent both club and country. Mohamed Zimmermann is our homegrown talent. The German winger has seen impressive growth in just half a season, justifying promotion to the first team. However, with our particular formation, I think having him develop as a center attacking mid might be for the better. While only time will tell, perhaps he can live up to the hype that another left-footed Bremen player achieved in Mesut Ozil. Not the largest transfer budget at our disposal, but we should be able to make a single signing here in January. I'm looking to bolster up our midfield. And Marco Gruich came to mind. It's hard to believe that he transferred to Liverpool in 2016. Several loan spells later, including two seasons in the Bundesliga at Hertha Berlin, he's now joined Porto on a permanent transfer. Perhaps it's a risk leaving an established side like Porto, but we can offer him first team football and clearly we're a club on the rise. It's going to be a 10 million transfer to secure this deal, just a single million more than Gruich's current evaluation. So this will be our team moving forward. Zimmermann available off the bench, ready to go on a moment's notice but we will be establishing a few scouting networks, keeping our original scout in Germany for nine months searching for any type of player, and also adding a second scout. In addition to building upon Bremen's already impressive track record of Bundesliga talents, we'll be scouting Peru, which is a relatively niche country as far as the FIFA 23 player pool goes. If you're a fan of the Bundesliga, you'll probably know of Claudio Pizarro, featuring several seasons for both Bayern München and Werder Bremen. I'm hoping we can find a similar player through our youth academy, but we'll be simulating to May 2020 with our final Bundesliga fixture against Dortmund. The stars have allied perfectly for us to achieve European qualification. A win would put us at fifth. A loss could see us drop as low as eighth. While it's already been an incredible run to reach this point, we'll try to close off this first season with one more victory. To make matters a little bit more difficult, we'll have to travel to Signal Aduna Park to get the job done. Definitely one of the most difficult away grounds to be getting a victory, but we do start the match with some positive momentum. It's Gruch to pick up the ball in Dortmund's final third. Eventually, the ball will fall to Dux, who gives us the opener 30 minutes in. I was planning on this rebuild being heavily focused around Fulkrug, but it was Dux that was actually one of the top strikers for the club. It's Felix Pasolak to get the equalizer for Dortmund just before the halftime break, and we will give Zimmermann his chance. The youngster already impressing here at Bremen, and let's see if he can maybe get a goal for himself. It was definitely a 10 second half, as this was a bad challenge from the American Gio Reyna. It's going to be shown a red card for the offense. While it's not something I like to see, it will significantly improve our chances of getting all three points, and Fulkrug bursting through the Dortmund defense. He's going to be finishing that one across goal to give us the 2-1 advantage. That was enough for us to secure all three points. It looks like Bremen and Miroslav Klose will be off to the Europa League next year. What a season it was. I think the fact that we saw an early exit from the DFB Pokal ended up helping us because then we could focus solely on the Bundesliga. No surprise as Bayern finished top of the table with Leipzig, Mönchengladbach, and Leverkusen rounding out the top four. Relegation spots going to Bochum and Schalke. As far as Bundesliga 2, our rival club, Hamburg, finished top of the league, so they will finally see their return to Germany's top flight alongside Hannover. FC Köln fighting off relegation as they defeat Holstein Kiel in the promotion playoff final. Dortmund get a little bit of revenge as they win the Pokal against Armenia Bielefeld in the final. Manchester City get the win against Liverpool in the Champions League final. Monaco to get the dub in the Europa League against Real Sociedad. And it's Villarreal to secure the Conference League final victory against Nice. This is what I mean about Dux being the top striker at the club. 21 goals from 34 appearances is pretty impressive alongside six assists. He was right up there with the Bundesliga top goal scores, finishing in third, but it's Zimmermann who I was arguably the most impressed with as far as young players go. We were able to find a promising Peruvian center forward in Andres Cardozo. Already at an overall rating of 66, he's got 73 to 94 potential. I'm honestly shocked our manager rating wasn't higher to close out this season, but it's fair to say this rebuild is going ahead of schedule.
Season two with Brayman, the big question is if we'll be able to withstand the test of even more competitions. If you're enjoying the rebuild so far, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Expectations from the board, pretty similar to last year in that we need to continue to sign younger players. As far as domestic success goes, we have to reach the round of 16 of the Pokal, finish mid-table in the Bundesliga, and only reach the group stage of the Europa League. Our budget has seen a rise up to 35 million, and our first signing of season two has to be one of the most realistic ones for any Bundesliga team. I signed Kai Wagner for my Freiburg rebuild, but because he played more of a backup role, I want to see what sort of potential he can reach as a starter at Bremen. I think the eight assists that he had in MLS in 2022 will be perfect as we utilize him as a wing back who can get forward and contribute on both the attacking and defensive fronts. It was a 15 million deal to secure Wagner's signature, one that I had no problem paying. Will we putting him on a left wing back position change only requiring two weeks and no change to his rating. This next signing is one that I am very excited about. Joao Pedro still at Watford despite rumor bids from both Newcastle and Everton that were approaching a 30 million transfer fee. If we look back at Bremen's history one of their most prolific strikers that Miroslav Klose was actually signed as a replacement for was Ailton known as a journeyman during his playing career. He featured in the most games for Bremen and his best season came in 03-04 where he scored 28 goals from 33 appearances. Mind you, that was also the last time Bremen won the Bundesliga title. Maybe that could be some foreshadowing for the future. Probably a few seasons out though, as Joao Pedro is someone we're signing for his potential, but it's only going to cost us 14 million to secure his signature. Slightly more than his evaluation, but not nearly as much as I expected to pay. Our final signing of the summer transfer window will be Alexis Tabidi, who Klose is actually managing over at Rheindorf Alltag on loan from Stuttgart. The youngster is impressing in the Austrian Bundesliga, the only teenager with more goals scored than him is Benjamin Sheshko. It's a minuscule deal to bring in a player of his potential, 2.5 million. I'm thinking he had his contract expiring at season's end. Only one player out with Valencia's signing stay as he requested a transfer away, but we'll begin our season against Union Berlin. Here's the new starting 11. For the most part, choosing to keep faith in the players that achieved us European football. But unfortunately, we lose our Bundesliga opener. We'll need to rebound in the Europa League as we've got a group consisting of Milan, Dynamo Kiev, and FCSB. Milan have a player that we should be familiar with, Tiao, the former Schalke talent, up to a 74 rating. Shaparenko is the top player at Dynamo Kiev, an 80 overall. FCSB, a club that used to have a lot of wonder kids in Kurbo, but not so much anymore, with their current highest potential player being Punta at a 68 overall. It's a tale of two stories as we go into the January transfer window. In the Bundesliga, we are not doing as well, currently in ninth place, but an impressive performance in the Europa League sees us top our group just losing a single match. I can't say I'm unhappy with our starting 11 as Joao Pedro has taken over one of the starting striker spots, and clearly we're doing something right as Manchester City offer us the manager job. Probably one of the most random job offers I've gotten in one of these rebuilds, but considering that City are underperforming in fourth, and they really haven't seen any changes to their starting 11, I can kind of understand the board's thought process, even a former Bremen player in Kevin De Bruyne being at the club. But I don't think the timing is right for closer to leave Bremen. We'll continue action in the Europa League round of 16 against Marseille. I'm happy to report that Zimmermann has finally completed his center attacking mid position change. No change to his rating, but now we can fine tune things and hopefully help him grow even more as we win our first match against Marseille in the Europa League 4 to 1, the second leg scoreless. But the 4 to 1 advantage on aggregate will see us face PSV in the quarterfinals. We just completed a rebuild with them, so of course, we're going to check on Xavi Simons, who's up to an 80 overall. The first leg ending in a 1-0 victory for us, and the second leg, a 1-1 draw. So again, keeping things close, but enough for us to advance to the semifinals against Atletico Madrid. I never thought I'd see the day where Thomas Muller makes the transfer to Atleti, but the first leg ending in a 1-1 draw, an absolute heartbreak in the second leg as we concede a 90th minute goal to Jack Felix to eliminate us from the Europa League. Not a bad season though to make a deep run into the Europa League. I think we were just lacking the squad depth to see a higher Bundesliga finish. Here is a full look at the league table with Bayern repeating as league winners. We're two spots down in the 10th place spot and the relegation zone going to Hannover and our rival Hamburg. Pottermoor is going to see promotion alongside Schalke and the promotion playoff final, again seeing a win from the Bundesliga club with Union Berlin keeping their spot. Leipzig will win the Pokal this time around with Barcelona defeating Manchester United in the Champions League final. Inter 
to defeat Atleti in the Europa League. So kind of happy to see that. And Arsenal will get the win in the Conference League against Braga. This is the kind of contribution I was hoping for in Season 1 from Full Krug. 21 goals across 40 appearances. Schmidt as the leading assist maker. I had high expectations for Cardozo, but it doesn't look like he has the most potential moving forward. Only going up plus two in his overall during his loan spell. But we'll keep moving and try to return back to European competition sooner rather than later. Anytime you drop out of European competitions, I tend to use the following season as a rebuilding year. Fortunately, that aligns pretty well with our board objectives as we try to sign two crucial players domestically, finish in a spot that'll put us into European competitions. A transfer budget of only 25 million, so less than we had last year. I was thinking about maybe turning towards the free agents to complete signings. But with news coming out that Tony Cruz is looking to end his career at Madrid rather than making a potential return to the Bundesliga, I instead opted to sell some players. It's going to start with our goalkeeper Pavlenka. Gotta give him credit for sticking with Bremen even when they dropped down to the Zweitzer Bundesliga. But there have been some rumors with him making a move to England, particularly Burnley. It's Aston Villa that paid 12 million to secure his signature. Almost Pieper will also be making a Premier League move to Newcastle United, joining for 17.5 million. And Bidcourt will be staying in the Bundesliga as he transfers to Frankfurt for 7.5 million. Obviously, we need to sign a replacement goalkeeper, and news has recently come out that Manuel Neuer will be missing the rest of the 22 23 season. So that could present an opportunity for Alexander Nubel to get his chance at Bayern, assuming he returns from his loan at Monaco. One of the most highly anticipated teenage goalkeepers goalkeepers in the Bundesliga when he was at Schalke. He hasn't been able to prove himself, I think, as much as he wanted when he initially transferred to Bayern. He's still lacking opportunities at this point in the rebuild, so I think making the transfer to an up-and-coming Bremen side that is looking to compete in European competitions is the perfect deal. He also had his contract expiring at season's end, so we were able to sign him for just 15 million. Kevin Donzo is another product of the Bundesliga, the Augsburg Youth Academy player. Has seen his evaluation rise since he transferred to Lenz in 2021. He's a regular player in the Austrian national team, and considering that Austria is the second most common nationality at Bremen, it's a move I wanted to make. 17.5 million to finalize the deal, which sits exactly at his evaluation probably gives us more upside than Peeper had. Both things seemingly not working out with our Peruvian talent Cardozo. I want to set up two new scouting networks, of course keeping one in Germany for the rest of the season, but also the United States as we search for a technically gifted player. But our Bundesliga season will see its opener against Leverkusen. Reports going around that the club needs to prove themselves, I think that is a fair statement. And I think with a lot of new signings to our starting 11, reshuffling the team may work out for the better. We do pick up a 3-0 win in our season opener. And as we go into the January transfer window, we have been able to see a swift rise in the league standings. Fourth place is certainly above expectations. Again, it seems like when we have fewer competitions to worry about, we perform significantly better. Not often do you get the opportunity to qualify for Champions League football, so I want to use the rest of the 16.5 million and sign one more player in Paxton Pomichol. FC Dallas are known to have one of the best youth academies in MLS, and Pomichol has been one of their key players. Unfortunately, injuries have kept him from potentially making the step up to European leagues. But with Bremen having a history of American players like Josh Sargent just a few years ago, I'm hoping that the 10 million deal can help Pomichol take the next step and give us another option in the midfield. So this will be our starting 11 and substitutes as we prepare for the rest of the season. We've got two Bundesliga matches remaining. And with the home match against Hoffenheim coming up, who sit sixth, we have a chance to secure our spot in the Champions League next year. It won't come easily, but we've got the home support and we can build upon the momentum that's gotten us to this point. Bremen fans have been loving life with Klose in charge, even bringing out a TIFO from his playing days. But we need to focus on the match at hand. What a start we had as it is going to be an opening goal from Zimmermann. Very lucky for him to keep possession off of the rebound for the goalkeeper, but only a few minutes later, it's full Krug. We know that he can score goals, and alongside Jao Pedro, it seems like we've got our attack figured out. I know he's getting up in age, and we probably need to think about another option here within the next few seasons, but we need to enjoy the moment while we can as Hoffenheim now get a goal back in the 65th minute. We find a way to answer back though, just 10 minutes later, it's Jao Pedro to be played through. 
Not much of a chance there, but he made something out of nothing. And our Brazilian striker gives us the three to one advantage and gives us three points. It only took us a year to get back to Europe. And now we have the Champions League to think about. Unlike the last time we qualified for Europe, we know what we need to work on for next year. But it's a similar story to season one. We more or less just had to worry about the Bundesliga this season. Leverkusen will take over as the top team in the league with Bayern dropping down to fourth. It's Paderborn and Augsburg to see relegation to Bundesliga 2. Armenia Bielefeld and Groth of fourth will see promotion to the top flight. And Schalke avoiding the drop this time around as they defeat Bochum in the promotion playoff final. Bayern can't stop winning trophies though as they get the win against Nuremberg in the day of faithful call. Real Madrid getting the win against Chelsea in the Champions League. Marseille seeing some redemption in the Europa League as they win against Liverpool. 4-3 on penalties, and West Ham United picking up the dub in the Conference League against Real Batiste. For me, this was the breakout season for Joao Pedro. He was consistently a starter and scored 20 goals across 35 matches. Zimmermann with double digits in the assist category. We weren't far off at all from Joao Pedro being the Bundesliga top goal scorer, but Newbell was the leader in clean sheets. What a first season as he secured the starting spot for us. Cardozo still not growing as much as I was hoping for. We will still track his progress moving forward though, as I did find two promising youth academy players. Brian Robinson, a 65 rated American center attacking mid with 72 to 94 potential. And Niels Busch, a German right winger, overall rating of 65 potential at 88 to 94. Not many changes in her manager rating, but season four could be a make or break year at Werder Bremen. It's been over 10 years since Bremen were last involved in European football, even longer since they were involved in the Champions League. With that said, finances still seem to be an important aspect to the board. For domestic success, they again want us to finish top four in the Bundesliga and only expectations to reach the group stage of the Champions League. Our transfer budget does see a rise though to there in about 50 million. And while Fulkrug's time as a starting striker consisted of lots of goals, it is time for us to bring in someone that can grow further in the rating. I think Sasha Kalajic is the perfect kind of striker for us. Of course, he has that target man build being six foot seven. But when he was at Stuttgart, he was heavily rumored to join some of the Bundesliga's top clubs. He eventually made the transfer to Wolves and unfortunately saw a long-term injury soon after that. But having that proven track record of scoring goals in the Bundesliga and having a former striker like Miroslav Klose as your coach surely only does good things as we sign him for 27 and a half million. If we want to withstand the test of multiple competitions, we need some leadership. And I think Victor Nelson could could be the answer for us at center back. I've been keen on signing this player in crew mode since he was still at Copenhagen, but he's now considered to be one of, if not the most promising center back in the Super League. Don't be surprised to see some of the top clubs around the world interested in securing his signature. But I was happy to have him land in Bremen for 17.5 million, considerably under his evaluation of 23 million. Watford seems to have some remorse from letting Joao Pedro go as they submit a bid to re-sign him, but of course we'll be declining that. We will see a striker leave though. Dux had that great first season, but has now shifted to being more of a rotational player. So I let him leave to Benfica for 10 million. Velkovic, another longtime Bremen player, will be heading to the Premier League as he joins Leicester City for 5 million. And things never really worked out for Oliver Burke as a striker here, so we're going to let him leave to Azet for 2 million. We are ready for the Bundesliga season to begin, and again, some gradual improvements to our starting 11. It seems like every year we have two or so players getting into the team, but here is our Champions League group. We've got PSG, Club Bruges, and Fenerbahce. I think we have a good chance of advancing, but we've got to watch out for Lionel Messi still going strong in this rebuild at 38 years old and an 82 overall rating. Club Bruges have managed to keep Nusa who has some good potential and is currently at an 80 overall. And Lincoln, who impressed enough in Liga Portuguesa to warrant the move to Fenerbahce in recent transfer windows, is now an 81 overall. It's the moment of truth in January 2026, and we have seemingly solidified our place as one of the top Bundesliga clubs, second place only to Bayern, and also doing wonders in the Champions League. I anticipated a second place finish, but we've done even better, securing 16 points and finishing top of our group. With that said, we do have some injury problems to consider. Fulkrug is recovering from a short-term injury, should be readily available in the next few days. But the injury bug seems to be following Kalajcic wherever he goes as he has a broken toe and he'll be out for three months. Hopefully we can have him back in the latter stages of the Champions League if we can get that far. We'll start with the fixture against Inter who have signed Krim Adeyemi from Borussia Dortmund. It's another one of their strikers, Julian Alvarez, who scored the tying goal in the 90th minute to see the first leg end 1-1. But we were talking about Kalajcic's return 
and he is back for the second leg against Inter, scoring what was the deciding goal to put us through to the quarterfinals, where we'll face FC Bayern. It's a transition year for them as Manuel Neuer will be retiring at season's end, but an opportunity for Newbell to showcase his ability. Unfortunately, we lose 2-1 to one the first leg and some strange score lines in the second leg. Four 89th minute goals will see us lose 4-3 to three on aggregate. This fight coming up short in the Champions League, I felt like we had some consistent performances across all competitions. It was only going to be Bayern to win the Bundesliga title, 16 points clear of the next place team, but importantly, we will qualify for the Champions League again next year as Armenia Bielefeld and Schalke see the drop to the lower divisions. It's the return of Augsburg and Hamburg to the Bundesliga as Mainz continue the trend of the Bundesliga team winning the promotion playoff final. You love to see Freiburg winning their first trophy as they defeat Hertha Berlin in the day of faith poke call, but it's Barcelona to get another Champions League victory against Bayer Leverkusen in the final. Atsalanta with the win against Club Bruges in the Europa League, and it's Azet to defeat Arsenal, who have seemingly become regulars in the Conference League. If last year was a breakout year for Joao Pedro, what would you call this year? 27 goals from 46 appearances. Zimmermann, again, the top assist maker, 14 from 45. And Nubel again, by and far the best goalkeeper in the league with 16 clean sheets. Some good development from our newly promoted Youth Academy players. Bush is up plus six to a 71 overall. Robinson also up plus six to a 71 overall. And pretty average stuff from Cardozo, going up plus one or plus two in his rating every single year. But our manager rating is exactly where it started. Who knows what the future holds for Bremen in season five. Realism becomes more and more difficult the further you get into these rebuilds, but we're going to do our best with the current squad and look to make a few improvements. If one thing has remained consistent, the board wants us to continue signing young players, win the Bundesliga title this time around, and reach the quarter final of the Champions League. Compared to previous years, I am more than happy with a 64 million transfer budget, and this is what I mean about keeping things realistic. You start to see strange things like a 92 rated 19 year old free agent. That is of course the regen of Kareem Benzema. We will finally see the departure of Cardozo. It just hasn't worked out for him. So we'll let him join Benfica for 4.5 million and instead sign another Peruvian player with Renato Tapia. He is the highest potential player from Peru in the FIFA 23 database and actually has a chance of being right up there with the most all time caps for his nation. As far as what it means for us at Bremen, it's going to be be a center defensive mid upgrade as we sign him for 17.5 million. A perfect deal considering he had his contract expiring at season's end. We'll continue making improvements to our midfield with our next signing being Jakob Moder. An odd transfer for him to go from Brighton to Monza, but I think many people say that when he's free from injury, he is one of the highlight players both on the club and national team level. I'm hoping that he can stay healthy, but if injuries do happen, we have the squad depth as he signs for 27.5 million. Another case with a player whose contract was expiring at season's end. I want to prepare for all competitions and I was happy to see Stefan Ortega available as a free agent. I was surprised to see his move to Manchester City in the most recent transfer window, but being a backup at one of the world's best clubs isn't too shabby either, and that's the same role he's going to play for us. Another surprise free agent find with Caden Clark, he is, or at least was, one of MLS's highest potential players. I think he's technically agreed upon a move to RB Leipzig, but he's still featuring for the New York Red Bulls right now. He was fine with the long-term rotation role, so hopefully he can grow into that good potential he has. With those midfield signings, we do want to let one of our starting 11 players go, Gurich leaving to Fiorentina on what was a 15 million transfer fee. But a tough start to our Bundesliga season as we match up against the team that knocked us out of the Champions League last year and won the Bundesliga, Bayern. This is a team I'm fully confident in though, especially Newbill at an 86 overall. He's going to help us out immensely from the back. It was enough to give us a two to one victory against Bayern and now we can turn our attention to the Champions League. We've got Milan, the team we matched up against the Europa League a few years ago. Ajax and Lech Poznan in our group. Alfonso Davies making the move from Bayern to Milan as he's now at an 89 overall. A former Werder Bremen player in Florian Grilic at an 80 overall for Ajax. And a longtime player to career mode with Bruno Perez over at Lech Poznan at a 65 overall. Another January transfer window has arrived and we are top of the Bundesliga. Three points clear of RB Leipzig for that first place spot and we've done enough to advance out of our Champions League group. Milan topping the group with 15 points, but I'm more concerned about the knockout rounds, and our team continues to get better and better. We will see a single departure in January with Goler joining Lazio on what will be a free transfer at the start of Season 6. But our first opponent in the Champions League will be Chelsea. They still do have Kai Havertz. Now a couple of seasons into the save, he's at a 91 overall. 
and it was a 1-1 scoreline. Seems like we keep on facing Julian Alvarez in this rebuild, but the second leg does end 2-0 in our favor, and that'll see us advance to the quarterfinals against PSG. We got the better of them in the Champions League group stage last year, and Neymar still at the club in an 81 overall. We will get another 2-0 victory as Zimmerman and Pedro get the goals, and the same scoreline in the second leg with Pedro and Moder giving us the advantage to now match up against Inter in the semifinals. Once again, it's a team that we've beaten before and maybe can do it again. They have brought in Julian Brandt for some of that extra Bundesliga experience, but it's Moder to score the only goal in the first leg and Joao Pedro to score the only goal in the second leg to see us face RB Leipzig in the competition final. We will be wrapping up the Bundesliga though before that match is played. And it's really between us and Leipzig as we go down to the final match day. Our situation didn't look great going into the last 10 minutes, but fortunately we get two goals to secure the draw and mathematically win us the Bundesliga title. It's taken us five years in this rebuild, but we've returned Bremen as one of the Bundesliga's best teams and one that can also compete on Europe's biggest stage. Here's a final look at the standings with Leipzig, Bayern, and Frankfurt rounding out the top four relegation spots going to Gorth IV and Hamburg. It's fair to say Leipzig is our rival for this season as we lost to them in the quarterfinals of the Pokal with Borussia Dortmund winning the competition against Bayern Leverkusen. Sevilla will get the win in the Europa League against Bayern and PSV winning an all-Dutch Conference League final against Feyenoord. Joao Pedro continues to be the top goal scorer at the club, now 26 goals from 49 appearances and Moder, in what was his first season at Bremen, managed 14 assists from 46 appearances. That was enough to lead the Bundesliga in that category, but now, all attention is on this Champions League final. Can we once again get the better of Leipzig and secure another trophy? Tactics-wise, Leipzig are known for their high defensive line, and Zimmermann will make the most of the opportunities. He breaks through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper and gives us the early 1-0 lead. Just 17 minutes in, our homegrown talent who's been here since the start and is now one of the stars here at Raymond. Nkunku will give Leipzig the equalizer, despite what I'm assuming was interest from some of Europe's biggest teams. He stayed true to them and has developed into a superstar. Kenny Clark making an appearance in this Champions League final as we get past regulation time and into 120 minutes. Leipzig will get the first goal in extra time, but we're not done yet. It's Joao Pedro now played through, and what a finish that was to the far post. It looked dire for a few minutes, but we're going to force penalty kicks. Not something you see often in a Champions League final. Well, we'll get things going. De Kettler managed to give Leipzig the early lead, but Joao Pedro answers right back, and Nubel able to make a big save. If we can go ahead and just continue converting, our chances, we should have no problem winning this Champions League title. A chance for Nubel to win it. I thought we had been able to guess the right direction, choosing to stay in the middle. Uh, but this is where things kind of turn for the worst. From a chance to seal it to now losing the Champions League final. Wish it would have been a player besides Caden Clark to take that last kick. Maybe someone with some more experience. But that is how things will end for us at Werder Bremen. A great rivalry between us and RB Leipzig. With them lifting the final trophy of this rebuild.